Hi, welcome to the bathtub. It's the old Master Bather. It's the all cotton edition of the Master Bather, uh, Master Bathing program here. International Bathing Alliance, all cotton, all cotton. We are all natural fibers here. Um, and when you hear this, oh, we have a theme song this week. <laughs> I know I'm not a drummer. I can't, I can't get a beat. Um, and I'm going to stop this if I remember to stop it. Got to stop it so it doesn't drive me crazy or you crazy. But if you're watching this show, you're you're beyond help anyway. So that's. Don't forget, this is the International Bathing Alliance. You can't get this cool t shirt anywhere. It's the only cool t shirt. You'll never get this. You can't find it in any shops. I don't care. You go to Taiwan, you go anywhere you want. Philippines, you're not going to find No one's going to make this t shirt for you. It's just mine. I'm the only person who has it. But you can join the International Bathing Alliance. We've talked about this for several years. It's, it is, uh, it is uh, basically, it's a, a certificate. I send you an e-copy because I'm too cheap to send you a piece of paper. I would print it out, use up, waste the ink. But I'll send you an e-copy if you want to make it, your, print it yourself. It's a certificate of bathing excellence, which permits you to read great books in any bathtub in the known universe. We do not cover the unknown universe. I have to, I have to publish this disclaimer every week because you still get people coming in saying, I want to read a book in an unknown universe. And I say, that's your problem. You, you sort that out. You sort that out with your lawyers. And we have, um, well, we have one of these. And basically, we put your name on a map, and we say something stupid about you, and then we mention it on Facebook. And that's the entire, that's all you get. And, and, and you, can put, do, you can do it for yourself, or you can do it for your grandma, the kids. You can do it for anybody. Put anyone's name on here. This is for Boris Johnson. I gave him, I, I put him in, I gave him a free subscription to the Bathing, uh, International Bathing Alliance. Because he's a complete idiot. That's how I looked at it. All right. So uh, what we're doing, the, this is the short story go around. You all know how this works. Basically, I have lots of different short story collections. And I kind of have them on a, one of those, what are those lazy Susans? It's just kind of like next to my bed. I move them all around. And I, I, I read a few short stories from this person to that person. And in the past couple weeks, I've been re continuing to read backwards the short stories of John Cheever. I read some really funny stories in here. Um, there's one called. There's, I'll just give you a couple of flavors. I'm, I won't give you. I won't read from all the all of these. I'll read from the new person we haven't talked about. There's a story in here called Metamorphosis, which is three or four stories about people changing their lives, changing. And it's one of these typical suburban bankers or guys who work in advertising or something, living in Shady Hill or wherever, Bullet Park, one of one of Cheever's. Uh, suburban territories and one day he gets up and i forget why he people someone someone mistakes him for he, he he's walking down the street and someone thinks he's the the uh car a carpenter or some average guy who doesn't own a house there who's just some some working guy and from that moment moment on everyone he meets thinks he's doesn't recognize him they all think he's somebody who doesn't belong where he is he just shows up at a party and the butler says what the heck are you doing here <laughs> It's just a weird story. But in four pages, it's very funny. If you haven't read John Cheever, definitely read John Cheever. Um, the Incredible Tales of Saki. I've been reading through these about halfway through. Um, I read a bunch of funny stories in here. Um, I don't like him as much as Collier, I have to say. I do see Collier's influence, uh, the influence of him on Collier, but he is good. One is called The Brogue. Is that the, the, the some, they, it's about a, they're all these kind of, well-off, uh, you know, estate people who lived in these estates in the country. They're kind of well-off, upper-middle-class families. And this one family has this wild horse that's a real pain in the neck. And it's really dangerous. And they, they're always trying to get rid of this horse. And they, finally, they give the horse to a guy who lives down the road. And they think, yeah, we got rid of the horse. And then the guy wants to marry their daughter. <laughs> they're, really, they're worried because they think the horse might kill them. It's, so it's just a silly story, and it has a got a kind of funny little ending to it. Saki's a lot of fun. Um, the other thing I'm continuing to read, I actually couldn't even remember which one at volume I was in last time we talked about it. I'm in volume the third volume of the People's Doonesbury, and as you can see from the cover, I've just gotten into the passage where during the Iran Revolution, when Duke, the oil company, sent Duke in, Uncle uh, Zonker's Uncle Duke, who's 
It was based on uh, on uh, Thompson, Hunter S. Thompson, a big, big, selfish nut, drug addict uh, with lots of guns. And uh, they parachute him into Iran, and they catch him. The Royal Guard catches him in there. There's a one scene where he's actually being executed. He starts. He's negotiating. <laughs> he's negotiating how much he'll pay for his life. Anyway, it's very funny. I, I, he has great timing. I love. I still love Trudeau. I'm kind of kind of had this idea of reading all the way through. Finally, I added a new book. I try to add a new book every time we do one of these. We haven't talked about Jean Reese. I believe it's pronounced Jean Reese. She published several handful of novels in the twenties, I believe twenties and thirties. I should get them down. Um, after leaving Mister Mackenzie, Voyage in the Dark, Quartet. When I first moved to London in the mid eighties, I picked up a bunch of her old Penguins at some second secondhand bookshop, and she writes about kind of t the sort of places I was living in, crummy bed sits and and every and going to the pubs and local places and people with not not too much money and a lot of drinking, and uh, sleeping around with people who who, who are kind of shab as shabby as each other. Uh, Mr. K There's some wonderful story, wonderful novels, and I haven't read her in a long time, but I've always wanted to get back to her. I found this book on the somewhere along the line over the years, Sleep It Off, Lady. This is a very late collection of stories. I have never read Jean Reese's stories. These seem to these seem to have been written over her life because she was born in the East Indies. She was born like in Barbados or somewhere like that. She writes up. She write, her most famous book is The Wide Sargasso Sea, which is about is about the woman in the attic in Jane Eyre before before she goes into the attic when she's raised in Barbados or in, the, or in the East Indies, wherever it is. Anyway, there's a lot of stories in here. One story is called Pioneers, Oh Pioneers, which is about some of the English people who go first go to live in these island, in the islands, and they've kind of bought up all the property, and they kind of look down contemptuously on all the local people. And uh, Reese goes to, when, when she was a kid, she went to Rada. I just read a little bits and pieces about her in the past week or two. And she went to England, went to, and she really hated this old culture she comes from. You can sort of tell from the short stories. And... Um, and from that point on, she I think her parents wouldn't let her go through the school. It wouldn't keep paying for it. So she became a chorus girl. <laughs> she really a kind of strange girl. And eventually became a, a, a partner, a friend, a lover of uh, Ford Maddox Ford. And she published a... She was sort of late in life in the 60s, 50s and 60s. She kind of had a resurgence because she hadn't published anything in many years. Anyway, that's all I know about her, except that I these stories come from most of her, her career. They were published in 1976. They're all about, tend to be about women and young women, or, or later on, very middle-aged and late and, and older women who have kind of, they're, they're very, I don't want to say they're amoral. They just live normal lives. And they, uh, they're, very, they're very independent. The most, of, most of them aren't married. There's an early story from about a young girl in Barbados who's, or somewhere in that area who uh, goes to meet some older guy who, who wants to take her out for walks. And he, she sits with him on a bench, and he puts his hand on her breast while he, she's sitting there with him. <laughs> and she thinks, what's, what's with this guy? And she still finds him kind of fascinating. So she doesn't, he never touches her again, but she still hangs out with him. But for some reason, in that, that moment, she decides she doesn't want to get involved with anybody. <laughs> the end of the story, she says, "I don't have this means I don't have to get married. I can do whatever the heck I want with my life. I can." And it's a very short, very realistic story. All the stories are very realistic. There's very little. Um, they're, they they're written in a very simple prose, just like the novels. They're not as sharply written, I don't think, as the novels. But I have to say, I just found this is a really enjoyable book of stories. I read read it really quickly. It was very different from all the other short stories I've been reading. And I was going to read a passage to you from it. And did I lose it? Already? Oh, no, I know where it is, though. This is... Which is the one where she's reading? It's about a woman reading books. Oh, heck, now I've forgotten where it is. Um, I thought it was the in Insect World. Oh, here it is. It's a, it's about again a youngish woman, and uh, she's looking for books, and she reads through she reads through the, um, some penguin paperback, 
and she becomes interested. She likes. She hates it when she buys a book. She, she's a book lover. She has to erase all the traces of the previous owner. So she erases their names and the underlining. And she starts erasing the underlining on this book and starts to learn about this character who used to own the book. And he sounds like a jerk. Um, only yesterday, she had come across a book called Nothing So Blue, Nothing So Blue. For she often bought books, most of them penguins, but some from secondhand shops. I bought all my books in secondhand shops in London. She always wrote her name on the flyleaf and tried to blot out any signs of previous ownership. But this book had been very difficult. It had taken her more than an hour to rub out the pencil marks that had been found all through it. They began harmlessly, quote, read and enjoyed by Charles Edward Roof in this year of our salvation, 1952, which being interpreted is, thank you very much, continued, quote, blue, rather pink, I think. Then the writer starts to make smart-ass remarks. And throughout the whole of the book, the word blue, which of course often occurred, was underlined. And in the margin, there would be a question mark, a note of exclamation, or ha ha. Quote, nauseating, he had written on the page, which began, I looked over and decided she would do. Then came the real love affair with a beautiful English girl who smelt of daffodils, and Mr. Roof had relapsed into, ha ha, says you. The guy's writing smart-ass remarks about the, what's happening in the book. Then, um, but it was on page 166 that Audrey had a shock. He had written, quote, Women are an unspeakable abomination, unquote, with such force that the pencil had driven through the paper. She had torn the page out and thrown it into the fireplace. Fancy that. There was no fire, of course, so she was able to pick it up, smooth it out, and stick it back in the book because she can't totally destroy the book that kind of <clears throat> an isolated women there's one wonderful story that a lot of the later stories take place in london about going into the hospital and coming out about a woman who's in her 50s or 60s and uh she's staying in a kind of halfway a rehabilitation home with some other women of her age and there's an old woman like in her 70s or 80s with really long hair who every night combs her hair like the young girls do because she wants to keep her hair really pretty it's it's a there's just lovely lovely stories. I can't I can't describe them very well. I've done my best, but I did really enjoy this. It's a late it's a late Jean Reese book. It's a little a little different from her novels. A little gentler in a way. Some of those early books are quite nasty, <laughs> quite very funny. Um, but I like Jean Reese a lot, and I have to say I couldn't put it down. I read it over two or three days. All right, that's our that's our st a short story go round, and we're gonna close it off now. And I'm not gonna play the music. I'm just gonna get the heck out of here. Stay safe.